Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and bioproducts industries. Welcome to our exciting Spectrum podcast, where today we'll be talking about the importance of a circular economy when it comes to paper machine clothing in the pulp and paper industry. I am Mark Rushton and I will be your host. To be truly circular, well, you have to be truly circular. In other words, every part of the manufacturing process needs to be examined, addressed and developed so it fits into the circular mode. This includes, of course, consumables used in the pulp and paper making process. And in this case, in our podcast today, paper machine clothing. Andritz has been closely working on deep research into making paper machine clothing circular with its re-fiber value project alongside the Montan University Leoben, a Austrian university specializing in mining, metallurgy and materials. So today we would like to welcome two experts uh, to our podcast, Uta Yenul from the university at Leoben, and also from Andritz, Jan Freudenberg, who is Global Director, R&D Forming Fabrics. Hello, Mark. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having us. Okay, first, Jan, can you tell us about paper machine clothing, what it's made of, and what are the challenges when it comes to recycling? What has been happening up until now to uh, paper machine clothing? Sure, Mark. Um, PMC is made of either different polyamide types in case of press felts, mainly PET or PET mixtures and PA6 for forming fabrics and PET and PPS for dryers. So far, most of the PMC has been burned to generate energy in power plants. For a small part, we saw many creative solutions and private purposes. Uh, for example, drainage on beads, as barrier under pathways to cover wood or fence etchings. We saw boat covers made of PMC or even bird nests made of monofilament waste. But uh, for sure, they are sometimes, let's say, borderline from an ecological point of view. Okay, so there's already been some work involved in using the uh, paper machine clothing after its uh, useful life has gone. Can you tell us about any figures uh, about uh, how much material is used in paper machine clothing in Europe and the rest of the world? What are the numbers? Of course, Mark. As a rough number, we are talking about twenty to 25,000 tons of recyclable PMC material globally and about seven to 8,000 tons of PMC in Europe. Okay, so quite an amount, really. So turning to the Refiber Value project, uh, Jutta, can you tell us a little bit more about this, please? Yes, I'd like to. The history is quite long, actually. So Mr. Freudenberg and Klaus Heiden, a colleague from another plant of Andritz, approached me about two years ago with the problem of having this picture made from PET and polyamide. And the question was if it is possible to separate this fine mixture of fibers. And so I contacted some colleagues from the chairs of waste management and they actually recommended me a small company, a spinner from the university, which has developed a very new, very interesting separation technology. And with this technology, it is possible to separate the fine fibers into pure fractions of polyamide and PET. Excellent. Real progress there, yeah? So, um, Jan, any comments there? Yeah, I mean, we are involved as Andritz because we were looking for a way to recycle our products. And uh, we finally found uh, also Circulizer as a partner. Um, as uh, Uta described already, they developed a new and efficient way for the separation of small plastic particles like uh, textile. And uh, the good thing was that it's been able to do the job on lab scale as well as on industrial size. Yes, I would like to add that it is a very promising technology. And so far, it's the only technology with which it is possible to separate such fine fiber material. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so can you tell us about the funding of this project, um, Uta? Yes, the funding is from the Austrian Research Promotion Agency, or FFG as we call it in Austria. So the funding scheme is called Bridge One, 
And this broad uh, funding scheme promotes the cooperation between scientific institutes and companies. The research projects should be designed to be close to basic research. However, an exploitation perspective should be recognizable. That means that we are working closely to an industrial application of the technologies we develop. Excellent. Thank you, Uta. Very good to have uh, um, some funding, for sure. Um, so can you tell us um, further about the work that's taking place with the university and the closed-loop solution that will see CO2 emissions being reduced to zero? Yes. Um, as you as you already mentioned, we are working on a closed-loop uh, solution for a circular economy. And what I always tell my students in the lecture a closed loop or a circular economy requires closed loop or circular knowledge. So we are working here with four different chairs from the university. There is the chair of waste management. They have the task of um, making a life cycle analysis and LCA in order to check if the project is, is really economically feasible and does it really reduce the CO2 output. And the chair of waste management is also making chemical analysis of the wastewater and the material itself to check if it's possible to recycle the material to meet the legislative aspects. And they were also checking what the legislative requirements for the recycling are. At our chair, uh, we are working on material characterization and we are also working if the material can be processed into fibers again. So we are trying to keep the level of the quality uh, of the material and make the same product again as it has been, been previously. Okay. Uh, can you uh, comment on any progress so far? Well, the project started in October and so far there have been trials made by the RVAV and by Andritz mostly on shredding the material and uh, separating the different fractions. My work so far and the work of my colleagues at my chair has been first material analysis to check if the material has undergone some deterioration or aging during its use in the paper machine. Um, this is very important to check if the material has still an acceptable quality with which we can make fibers again. And so far, I think we are looking good. Excellent. Great. Thank you for that. Um, can you enlarge upon how this initiative is proving to be a proactive solution to the climate crisis and even go towards mitigating climate change when it comes to using recycled materials for paper machine clothing? Jan, can you um, answer that one for us, please? Sure, Mark. As we heard um, earlier, it's a, it's, it's a really interdisciplinary project and we are quite happy to have the, the University of uh, Leoben with us. In general, we at Andritz try to use our resources and raw materials responsibly. Furthermore, we try to achieve our ESG goals, um, but we also want to support our customers in achieving theirs. And uh, in general, we think it's just stupid to burn tons of valuable, ex expensive and uh, recyclable raw material every year. Okay, excellent. And how will Andritz papermaking customers experience the use of a circular approach to paper machine clothing in the future? In other words, what uh, services and solutions will Andritz supply? Well, um, Mark, we, we try to build up uh, a material cycle together with some target customers in Europe at first, and that's also part of, uh, of that project. Um, we would like to learn and see the remaining hurdles to take in terms of logistics, uh, local legal aspects, etc. Um, when this has been installed, we would like to upscale the process. At the end of the day, we would like to support our goal and underline that uh, we are a reliable partner for our customers who understand their needs in a sustainable way. Excellent. Uta, anything to add there? Well, we here at the Montana University at Leoben are working together interdisciplinary between all kinds of fields of research. And what we are trying to do is find a circular solution for the questions we get from the industry. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. 
Clearly, we can see that no stone is being left unturned when it comes to designing and implementing circularity at pulp and paper mills. And this podcast on paper machine clothing has given us just a glimpse into the deep and challenging work involved. It's also great to know that paper makers have a reliable partner in Andritz when working on reducing their own carbon footprint and increasing the circular economy at their own mills. Should any of our valued listeners wish to find out more, please feel free to visit our website. You can find the link in the show notes of this episode. That was an excellent discussion, and I would like to thank our experts for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye.